it. Oh God, can't get up. I think I pulled it myself. Be realistic, just put it in a carry-on bag. I don't know how many more times I can waddle into this video for you guys. I can barely breathe. I am due one week from today and by the time you guys watch this video, hopefully baby will already be born and happy and healthy. But I figured right before we give birth, why don't we just talk about some of my concerns and something that's probably going to help out a lot of you who are planning on giving birth in the future here in Germany as well. Before I dive into what I will be packing into my hospital bag and what you really do not need to pack in your hospital bag here in Germany, I should probably introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jenna. I'm a Canadian immigrant living here in Dusseldorf, Germany, and I have been here since 2014. I share all of my tips and tricks over here on YouTube, all of my stories and the processes that I go through here in Germany in order to help you guys out as well or just to have a little bit of fun so that you guys can follow my journey as well. So what do you pack in your hospital bag? What do you not pack? What do you really, really need? What is over the top? And what do they offer in North America perhaps that they don't here in Germany? And my bag is actually packed right now, but we're gonna repack it and there's a reason for that. I wanna show you the bag that I have right now. Oh my God, okay, look how cute it is. <laughs> Oh God, can't get up. <laughs> I think I pulled a muscle. <laughs> I did, I really did pull a muscle. I absolutely love the bag, so I thought, this is gonna be my hospital bag. I actually got it a while ago, so I actually used this for my last two hospital visits. I have to tell you guys, the biggest tip that I have. I don't know why people love bringing these like cute bags to the hospital because it was like the most impractical thing I could have possibly used. You've got different things that you're gonna be packing. You're gonna be packing electronics, your toiletries, stuff for you, stuff for baby. And you're really gonna want a couple different sections for your clean and dirty clothes there because when I tell you guys that your clean clothes are gonna get dirty, I mean like there's a lot going on up here and a lot going on down there that you're really gonna wanna see separate those sections. You might not even know how much space you're gonna get if you're sharing a room, if they have shelves where you can put your clothes on, how long you're even gonna stay, do you wanna unpack your bag? Be realistic, just put it in a carry-on bag. During this pandemic, there are a lot of rules about your significant other joining you in the hospital. They will likely have to get a COVID test if it's in the middle of the night and there are no test centers open. Your husband or your wife or your partner might not be able to join you. Be realistic and bring a bag that you can actually bring yourself even when you're going through contractions. So when I say something practical, I mean something with wheels. Now, this is the one I'm gonna be using. This is the one we're gonna repack together. This lightweight carry-on was gifted to me by today's sponsor, which is Level 8. They are a New York City-born brand for different luggage and different bags. I really like this brand in particular because I think that they're super stylish and they look really cool. And I asked them to send me a carry-on, not only so that I could use it for my hospital bag, but also because when you're traveling around Europe, chances are you're likely going to be using a carry on and chances are you're actually gonna want one that's of good quality to be able to handle those cobblestone roads. <laughs> So this one in particular is their Roadrunner carry-on with their 20 inch laptop pocket. And I will be using this baby to repack everything that I made a mess of in my old bag. <laughs> Alright, so this is the loot that we've got. Try not to think too much. Hopefully you're only going to be in the hospital for two to three days. And if you live in a bigger city or you live close to the hospital, then it's pretty easy for your loved ones to come by and drop off anything else that you might need rather than overpacking from the get-go. It's my hope that I can leave the hospital relatively quickly. However, don't forget that the Untersuchung, the appointments that they do on the child, can be done in the hospital, can also be done at the doctor's office. We've called the pediatrician ahead of time. They said they have absolutely no capacity to take a look at my baby for her U3, I believe it is, or is it the U2? I'll have to check. And that it's best I just stay in the hospital and wait for that appointment. So first I wanna start with the things you might not think about when you're thinking about giving birth, and that is the electronics and the paperwork, which can, at the end of the day, actually be some of the most important things that you need to bring with you. In my level eight carry-on, I have two different sections, so I'm actually gonna put all of my electronics into the one front section so that it's separate from everything else that we're 
going to be packing. Another thing I should mention is that you actually have to be really careful at the hospitals here in Germany. They do have some lockers that you can put your stuff in, but actually these TSA approved uh, luggages are not a bad, bad idea. Although someone can roll away with your luggage, <laughs> you can actually lock it up and then put it in the locker, hopefully, that the hospital provides. We have here our 20 inch laptop carrier, so I'm just gonna go ahead, slide my laptop in there, and then I actually have a additional space here in the front where I can fit my laptop charger and the power cord to go with it. Most importantly, you're not going to want to forget your Mocha Pass. Basically, if you're watching this video and you are pregnant, you're already going to have one of these, but this is kind of like a mother's passport that tells them all the information that they need to know about your pregnancy. So that's the first thing you're going to have to give to them. And mine conveniently fits right here in the front pocket. Another thing you're going to really want to think about is the paperwork. This is actually something that I was really happy about with my first pregnancy. I came prepared with all of the paperwork. Depending on which hospital you go to, some of them can actually register your child's birth so that you don't actually have to go to the Standesamt so that you can get that Geburtsurkunde or the birth certificate in order to file all of the other paperwork that you're going to be filing for Elterngeld and Kindergeld and I actually have all of those documents here with me in this folder. I know that when they do register the birth they need quite a bit of information from you in order to register the birth in the hospital so if you can bring all of those supporting documents with you. If you're foreign you're definitely going to need your passport. If you're not foreign you're also still gonna need your identity card, your house card, etc. And don't forget a pen to go with it. Other important things that you don't want to forget, trust me, is making sure that you're prepared with all of the electronics that you typically use. The reason why I actually packed my laptop is because, funny enough, with my first birth, I actually did work in the first five days that we were in the hospital. But also, if you want to watch Netflix or anything like that, if you are sharing a room with someone, it's going to be very important that you pack some headphones or something similar. This is my practical three prong or three charger cord, and then also my power pack here. I constantly had issues issues with where the plug was in relation to my bed. <laughs> So this time I'm going to bring this with me so I have absolutely no issues with that. I actually have a little Polaroid snap camera so that I can take pictures from the birth and immediately use them and put them into my pregnancy diaries. So if you have anything sentimental like this, you might want to bring it along too. Otherwise, bringing a good quality camera doesn't hurt because having these images in the long run is something that I really appreciate. I also use my blue light glasses which help when I'm on my phone or my laptop. If you're not a movie fan and you're not gonna be on your computer or your phone then it might be worth packing a book guys I know the first few days are really exhausting but at the same time you might have a baby that actually sleeps and you're awake we can just close up that section for now lock it up okay so mama first what am I gonna pack I actually am not gonna pack that many things for myself so I've got myself two different pairs of pajama sets because I don't plan on ever changing out of them three pairs of massive black underwear and I say massive black underwear because I mean black is your go-to color girl after you give birth but also because you are likely going to be wearing a very very massive pad or diaper like thing the hospital does actually usually provide you some mesh big net underwear like this but after a day or two that gets really uncomfortable and i prefer to have my own undies with me a couple pairs of socks some warm slippers to walk around the hospital with or some comfy shoes, whatever you prefer. Some yoga pants, two breastfeeding tops, super practical. I'm only packing two, though you can probably pack three or four. They were my best friend in my first birth. And one thing you might wanna think about is what do you wanna give birth in? In North America, they usually have you wear this like hospital gown where your bum hangs out. Actually in Germany, for the most part, I've never had to wear a hospital gown before. And in my first pregnancy, I actually just like, I didn't realize, but I, I thought I was gonna have to change. I ended up giving birth in the dress that I came in. Thankfully it was a nice long dress. It was super stretchy. The only thing was after baby was born I got like immediately cold and then my whole dress was all the way up to the top because they immediately shove baby on your boob. So this time I've thought long and hard about it. I'm going to be bringing one of my breastfeeding dresses. Here you actually just lift it up and you can breastfeed from the side. So I will be able to put my dress back down and be able to breastfeed my baby without being cold. And then really for me, for mama, the only other 
another thing that I would mention in terms of clothes is to have like a big long cardigan obviously not a pullover sweater or something because there's gonna be a lot going on over here but something like this will definitely do consider bringing a towel too they very rarely have towels for some reason I don't know why and if they do they're really really small and super uncomfortable so I'm bringing a nice big one you might not want to bring a white one you might want to bring a darker colored one considering what you'll be washing off of you that's your prerogative now I've watched a lot of what to pack videos and a lot of them don't actually include baby stuff that is actually because you don't need that much baby stuff maybe you want to put together like a cute going home outfit or if you're lucky they actually do sometimes have photographers in the hospital we did so my son had a cute little photo shoot and it's nicer when they have their own cute little clothes that you can take with you so I actually got her this cute little dress a little body to go with it I'm jumping on trend guys gotta go with the headband some pants and a little hat and then two sleepers I don't know why I'm packing these sleepers guys actually you don't need to pack sleepers they have more than enough at the clinic I just am thinking forward a little bit right now at least in Dusseldorf the hospitals are overwhelmed and you'll probably get a good sense of whether that's the case for your hospital or not as well and I find that sometimes it's hard to get the staff in and maybe if your baby spit up and you need to change the clothes it's just nice to have something there just in case otherwise you can ask to put some extras on the side from their own stash too another little thing that you might not think about is these little anti-scratch mittens they didn't have them at the hospital where I was so it is something to consider that's why I'm packing them this time and then I'm packing all of her stuff in a little side bag so that I'm extra organized <laughs> you will get a sleep sack when you go there for your child so you don't have to worry about that but my child actually slept better being swaddled and I guess this is not something that's super popular here in Germany but I'm gonna bring this this time it's actually like a pre-made swaddle I use this one for my son as well and it worked wonders and since it's October we're obviously gonna have to think about what are we gonna be bringing her home in I'm just gonna leave her in the clothes or the sleepers that I've brought with me throw a little hat on her and then bring a blanket to wrap her in we walked home with my son because we lived super close but now that we've relocated we're gonna be taking the car also just one spit up cloth just in case again sometimes the nurses don't get to you as quick as you might need them so having a muslin cloth there as well is gonna be very very helpful now the big things that you can't forget of course is your maxi cozy if you are gonna be driving or maybe even a stroller if you're gonna be walking and the biggest lifesaver for me in regards to all of this packing was definitely the breastfeeding pillow this is not something I thought about I sent my husband home last time to go get it because I didn't realize how much work the first few nights are learning how to breastfeed how long you're gonna be docked on if you are planning on breastfeeding and this is just super super comfortable and makes breastfeeding the first few days a very very easy in the hospital and the last thing you need to think about is your toiletries and any other little knickknacks that might be helpful before or after the birth I have got my breast pump with me I actually didn't need it so this is something that you might want to think about whether you want to bring it or not I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring it this time but basically at the beginning I was having troubles producing milk on one side and it actually probably would have helped with the first birth had I have latched this on the other side because sometimes when you're breastfeeding on one side or pumping on one side it comes out the other side so this would have been easy to kind of help the milk flow or the milk production increase in the first few days rather than waiting until I got home this is gonna be totally related to you and your situation but I had some issues breastfeeding I was never producing enough milk for my son in the first pregnancy and so one of my friends actually gave me a good tip for this birth and that is just to pack a little bit of formula with you not the end of the world if you have to do it it's just in case of emergency so I'm actually just gonna bring two little bottles of Aptamil so that I have that and then I'm gonna wash this bottle up so that I have that ready to go too. Sometimes the nurses agree with you, sometimes they don't agree with you. This can also be in regards to a soother as well. They like absolutely refused giving my son a soother for the first two nights and by the third night they were like, your kid's just a soother kid, like just take it, you know? So if you're not totally against soothers, then it's worth bringing your own so that you don't have to like explain yourself or argue with a nurse as to why you think your child might need a soother. And then you've got your snack bag and your toiletries bag. So this time around, I'm actually packing extremely strategically. I am going to say my biggest suggestion is to bring an eye mask because if you are sharing a room, you are really going to need that. I would also suggest packing yourself some earplugs as well. Makeup is entirely up to you. I just take quite a few photos in the hospital. Wanna just bring my cover up and my mascara just to make myself feel a little bit better. Some lotion, some linoleum cream in case you get some chapped nipples. 
Of course, they also have this in the hospital, so don't worry. It's just a matter of do you want to wait for the nurse or do you want to tell her about it? Otherwise, <laughs> bring some of your own. These are all just samples that I've gotten from friends or, or from like birth kits. These are disposable nursing pads. I have a few different sets, but they also have them at the hospital too. I'm just bringing them so again, I don't have to wait too long to see a nurse just to ask for more pads. Some dental floss, a little mirror, toothbrush, toothpaste, Q-tips, scrunchie, belly oil, wet wipes, not essential. These are actually for me and not for my baby. <laughs> they have tons at the hospital, but I got this for free, so I'm just gonna bring them with me to have. This is actually a bar of Dove soap and this little cloth. I'm bringing this little cloth because usually I have like a loofah, but you're gonna wanna be very, very sensitive down there if you've given birth naturally. And so this is going to be my game plan. And then of course, last but not least, my hairbrush. What's with the snacks? This is something that my mom is super confused about here in Germany. She's like, Jenna, why are you packing so many snacks when they feed you at the hospital, don't they? Well, yes, they do. However, the food at the hospital is not <laughs> the greatest. You also don't know when you're gonna be giving birth and what they're gonna have available at the hospital that I'm gonna be giving birth at. They actually only offer yogurt and dry crackers in the middle of the night. They won't bring you your meals unless it's during a very particular time of day. In the first part, that actually wasn't that important. I had my husband bring me Duna, but again, during Corona times, you really don't know when you're gonna have visitors, what they're allowed to bring, what the rules are, restrictions, etc. Also, you might wanna think about things like, I don't know, Traubenzucker, which a lot of German mummies swear by, which can help give you that little boost of energy that you need when you are giving birth. I've got a few different fruit bars that I'm gonna be packing with me. The tea selection in the hospital I'm going to is terrible, so I'm just bringing my own teas with me. And then I've got some little snacks like knabatiere and um, exotic nuts, cashew nuts, which are my absolute favorite. And then gum, only because for me this has been my addiction the entire pregnancy and I feel like I, I can't live without it. Last but not least, they have tons of water, bubbly and non-sparkling water at the hospital, but I prefer bringing my water bottle so I can bring it absolutely everywhere with me. It's also going to be really helpful, obviously, while you're giving birth too. So with my new bag, we've got ample space here to pack on both sides. We've also got more organizational options here and a really big deep storage section in this space as well. And there you have it. We are packed, we are ready to go to the hospital. One thing I didn't pack that I would maybe recommend, I just don't mind, is flip-flops for the shower if that's something that really bothers you. Otherwise, I also didn't even mention, you might wanna pack your phone with you. You'll probably have it with you counting contractions anyway, but also your purse or your wallet. So your money, lip balm, a mask, which you're definitely gonna need in the hospital, hand sanitizer, hand cream, ibuprofen, and my car keys so we can get home. And if there are things that you absolutely do not need to pack it is things like wet wipes diapers changing pads and a good little tip is that anything you touch in the hospital you actually have to take with you or throw out they can't reuse it for anybody else I had like two weeks worth of wipes and diapers and everything simply because I had touched them and the hospital was like we can't take those back but you also really don't need like day-to-day -day changes of clothes for your new baby a going home outfit for you you know nobody's gonna judge if you go home in your pajamas that's what I'm doing. You definitely don't need to be packing water. There's like ample bubbly water and still water there. You don't really need to pack a sleep sack with you. They have them there. You don't need any stuffies or lovies to bring with them. It's a newborn baby. They really don't need it unless you're planning on doing some cute photo shoot while you're there. So that's it. If you are interested in checking out the suitcase because you loved it and all the practicality that comes with it, Level 8 is a super neat brand. They actually also make this suitcase from an aerospace grade hard shell that is actually designed here in Germany. It is water resistant, weighs about nine pounds, holds about 38 liters. So as you saw, it held everything I needed and more. I have to say my ultimate favorite thing about this and the reason I am using it also for my hospital bag is because of the organization, because I can put all my electronics in the front because I can lock it and then lock it again in the hospital. And if I'm being entirely honest, I have this weird thing about wheels. <laughs> my larger suitcase actually has these beautiful rubber wheels exactly like these ones, which are super quiet. You can't hear them. They roll super, super well when you're running through the airport and you're late for your flight. And these ones have those exact same 360 swivel rubber wheels. Have I sold you? <laughs> 
Anyway, something similar, something like this will definitely do for your hospital bag. Make sure it's on wheels, guys. You don't want to be carrying around this massive bag while you're in labor. And we will see you guys once the baby's born. Ah, I can't believe I'm saying that. Wie immer, vielen, vielen lieben Dank und bis später.